My figure comes with a flashlight. Oh yeah? My figure comes with a baby velociraptor. Okay, you win. Today we're going to be checking out the Mattel Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. This is Owen and Baby Blue. Now, these are slightly smaller figures, so we'll take the tape measure to discover that Owen here is a little shorter than being four inches in height. For accessories, I guess the coolest one is little tiny baby blue, the blue velociraptor that comes included with Owen. It's of a softer material, and it has absolutely no posability to speak of, but it does have some really cool little details to him. They've even gone in and painted the eye, although it does kind of look like, yeah, there it is on the one side there, they've put a little slot also in the eye area. It's got this nice speckling effect, which I do appreciate that they would have actually gone as far to do. And they, of course, it's got the trademark blue stripes, hence the Velociraptor being called blue. Unfortunately, the Raptor doesn't do the greatest of jobs standing. You can kind of cross your fingers, cross your toes, cross your eyes, and hope that the figure, the dinosaur, does stand upright. Nine times out of ten, he stands. That one time, the one out of ten, he will topple over. I guess it really depends on what surface you have him standing on. I guess just a little bit of balancing, you can get the dinosaur to stand, but a lot of times, yeah. I don't want to even say nine times out of ten, because nine times out of ten sounds like it would be the greater average of it standing upright it does it does frequently fall over though so that's that's a bit of a shame i guess if they had put the legs more straight together probably would have helped the balancing act and poor baby blue wouldn't topple over as well so just kind of scratch what i said it's not quite nine times out of ten it's kind of more like half and half 50 percent of the time he's probably going to be toppling over unless you get a little bit of a balancing act happening some of the other things that come included with Owen is the uh, the little sachet pack, the little travel pack that comes included with him. It's, again, of a softer material. It actually seems like it's a little bit more of a denser material, denser plastic, than what was uh, than what was little blue there. No paint. Oh, I'm all butterfingers today. No paint. There it is. <laughs> there it is right there. No paint, but uh, very nicely detailed, I suppose, for a little carry-all pack. Uh, you can fit it over his head. It's kind of one of those things where you have to bend the arm, kind of fit it over top of his arm like that. And you can fit it into place like that. One of the other things that he comes included with is a very, very small knife. I wish they had done some needed paint work to the knife because unfortunately it's only cast in brown plastic. I guess in some regards the sheath, the section that the knife is actually inside, is brown. So I guess they're not misleading you. It's not necessarily like it's the, that's the blade itself. And nor is the knife removable. So it's kind of just, if he was going to be using it, and it does fit into his hand, he would have to then stop and make sure he pulls out the knife from the actual sheath, because what he's doing right now is going to be absolutely useless against dinosaur threats. You'll see that there's this little peg hole here, this little peg. Flip the figure around and it pegs just on the back of his belt. Which again, realistically, I mean, if that is the sheath, it makes sense that that could be pegged onto the back of his belt. You're not simply just taking a blade and sticking the side of it into a belt. That just wouldn't make as much sense. As for the figure itself, it's actually pretty good. It's a little on the soft side. Let me kind of describe what that means. The figure's body plastic feels it's of a, of a softer variety. It's actually quite poseable when you really get down to it. So I'm impressed that they didn't luckily just go with hinges on the legs. You actually get a fair bit of articulation, a fair bit of posability, which unfortunately I think when it comes to uh, other lines, I'm not gonna get into details, but other lines where figure lines just have straight swivels and they always are trying to find cost reduction, ways to save money. It's nice to see that for the Jurassic World figures, you actually get a fair bit of posability, but we'll, of talk about all that in a second. 
As for the face sculpt, it lends itself enough for you to think that that looks like Chris Pratt. I mean, there's enough going for it that it has the markings of one Chris Pratt. For, for Owen's likeness, I think it's pretty good. Keeping in mind, again, it's a smaller figure. The hair sculpt, as well as the slight, slight indication of the beard there, has been painted in in almost a kind of more of a reddish, orangey brown. They've even gone in as far as to paint in the eyeballs, as well as the pupils, and even the little tiny, small eyebrows have been painted in there as well. So well done there. Certain angles, it looks a little bit more like him than straight on. Straight on, I guess, is probably one of his weakest sides, but... It does get, again, the point across that it does look like Owen from Jurassic World. It's not just a, you know, look from a distance and squint, and that will look like the figure. But like I said, it's very soft. It's probably hardest to describe this in a camera, but uh, take my word for it. The legs are a little bit more of a substantial plastic, but like the arms and everything, he feels he feels very light, which again is not necessarily a bad thing, but, uh, you know, he's not a, he's not a very heavy feeling figure. Even gone in as painted the watch, which I have to, I didn't realize that the watch head, he's got it facing inward. A uh, topic of debate myself, I've always thought that watch faces should be facing outward so that you're actually looking at it on your wrist and not looking, you know, have to flip your wrist upside down to see it. I would be curious, as though that's not really the topic of this particular figure, but I'd be curious to know what you guys think down below when it comes to your watches. Do you display them with the watch face inward? Or do you have it with the watch face outward? It's kind of like the same age-old debate of uh, of the toilet paper roll. You know, which which way you have it. In case you are wondering, and probably you're not, I always go under. The under toilet paper, not the over. I think the over looks ugly. The under looks a little bit more, a little bit more like you care. But that's that's for another that's for another video. Uh, running through his pose, Billy, his head rotates all the way around. Uh, you also have the hinge happening up and down, arms hinge outward, as well as you can rotate the arms all the way around, bend at the elbow, uh, rotate ever so slightly, there we go, ever so slightly on the arms, no wrist articulation, uh, waist articulation he has, legs split out as you probably saw at the beginning of this review, forward and back on the legs, bend at the knee, rotate the lower leg, and uh, he doesn't have any posability on the uh, on the actual feet. Once again, figures that have peg holes on the undersides of their feet, and yet the uh, they don't include display stands. It's not to say that he has a tough time standing, he stands perfectly fine. In fact, he actually st stands a lot better than unfortunately his little comrade here, little baby blue, which again, not quite nine times out of 10, more 50-50, dinosaur's gonna give him a stand. Come on for the last wrap up, there we go, got him to stand. Growing up with three and three quarter inch size figures like Star Wars and G.I. Joe, I always appreciate when a toy line can come out for a movie that have smaller scale figures like this. It also means too that they can market vehicles, which Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom also does feature. We may have a look at those in some future videos, so stay tuned for those. I do like the look of Owen. Does he look like Chris Pratt? I think he looks enough like Chris Pratt. The colorings are nice. Paint generally is pretty clean, and even though the plastic feels a little on the softer side, I do really enjoy the fact that he has posability to him. Little Baby Blue is a nice little addition, and actually, there's gonna be an Owen released, or he currently is released with a larger blue. We're gonna look at him in a future video as well, so you can kind of see how Little Blue will progressively get bigger, and more likely to rip your head off. Uh, Fallen Kingdom has not yet hit theaters, but definitely looking forward to when uh, I can sit down in a movie theater with some popcorn and a soft drink for about $54 and enjoy the new Jurassic World. I really like the first Jurassic World. Definitely looking forward to the next one. Uh, today we were having a look at the Mattel. This was the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, Owen and Little Baby Blue. Just want to also stop, take a moment and appreciate the fact that Blue is currently standing. Not quite nine times out of 10, but 50-50, 50% says that he's gonna fall over. Currently, he's of the 50% saying that he's currently standing. I shouldn't have said that. Now that I've said that, he's probably gonna fall over. If you guys wanna check out some more Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom reviews, there's a playlist on this channel specifically for that. We're gonna do some more figure reviews and other Jurassic World uh, toys leading up to the big release date of the movie in theaters so stay tuned for those and other videos will also be coming onto this channel as well as always guys thanks for watching as you always do i'll see you next time